You cannot do this, Algernon. You swore that we would give up our commands when this horrific war was over. Our people need our leadership. If you're unwilling, leave. Our people must rebuild, and we must help unite them. So, we did not fight for freedom, but to conquer this land and our own. We fought to win, and now the Evanuris are as gods. I do not answer to Mithal's annoying lapdog. The people are afraid. They must believe in something. They need strength. And wisdom. They need gods who can protect them. We are not gods. You will learn that. Every lapdog hides a wolf inside. That was strange. They were speaking Elvin, but I understood it. I believe we have experienced a memory in each of our native languages. Not just any memory. One of the Dread Wolves. And the mages who declared themselves my gods. Well, mine and Davrin's. That can't be easy, Blara. It was so mundane. Nothing grand or cosmic. No setting fire to the sun, just talking, politics. I wish they were monsters. Something grand and terrible. Seeing them like that, they're no better than Tevinter nobles. But no worse, either. They were people, and people can let you down. All right, what else can we take from this memory? Elgrinon was hungry for power, did anything he could to get it, and to hold on to it. Then Solus, furious at Elgonon's installing himself as a despot, started his rebellion. There's another moving part in this. Mithal. She was keeping the peace. Mithal and Solus were close. The Inquisition found a temple to Mithal, and there were wolf statues everywhere. Then she sides with Elgonon over him. A betrayal. It sounded like Solus was loyal to Mithal. What did Elkanon call him? Mithal's lapdog? And then she grabs power alongside Elkanon instead of standing for her principles. I'd be angry too. Angry enough to start a rebellion? That's not how he'd see it. He didn't destroy the world. Elkanon did. Solus did what he considered necessary to stop him. Solus would try to justify what he did, but he'd also blame himself for what happened. Perhaps these murals aren't simply memories. They're what Solus wishes to forget. His regret. That means they're a way to learn his weak points. Why are we worried about Solus? He's trapped. Right. But the Dread Wolf was the god of trickery. He's looking for a way out. Bet on it. Meanwhile, keep your eyes open in the crossroads. If there's a way to restore the rest of these murals, Solus would have kept it in his hideaway. It'd be nice to get inside his head for a change. I was not certain you would come. You were the one who walked away. I never turn my back when my friend needs me. The Evanuris seek the magic of the Blight. Impossible. The Blight is safely sealed away forever. No, oh, I wish I could believe you. I have sensed the breaking of the wards. I will investigate your claims. If they forget the danger of the Blight, I will endeavor to remind them. What if instead you left the Evanuris? And remained with me. Do you not wish for freedom from this struggle? Be at peace, love. I will stop them. As you must. The blight is our mistake.
Did Mithal call Solas love in that memory? That's what it sounded like. So they were doing it. The elven gods were free with their emotions. They felt things deeply. The way they expressed things, well, it feels romantic to us, but that wasn't really how it was. Back then, I mean. Nah, they were doing it. Whether they were doing it or not, Solus cared about her. That's what matters. So the Dread Wolf goes to Mathal. They might be fighting, but they have history. And he warns her about the other gods using the Blight. That's more important than his rebellion. It's like kingdoms coming together when an archdemon rises. Mithal didn't think it was possible. She said the Blight was sealed away. There's an old legend about it, Davern, the one with Andruel's armor. Not sure it matters. We're deep in elven lore already. What's the legend say? Right. Well, Andruel was the goddess of the hunt. She put on armor, magic armor, made us something called the Void, drove her mad. I remember this one. The other gods were afraid Andruel would turn on them. She was doing all kinds of horrible things, causing plagues. It does sound like the Blight. Well, it all ends with Mithal fighting Andruel. After, Mithal turned into a dragon. She what? Why didn't you start with that? Anyway, she took Andrul's armor away, then Andrul's madness left, and peace returned. Intriguing. So it's possible Andrul stumbled onto the magic of the Blight. And when Andrul went mad, Mithal took it from her and locked it away. Until someone started using it again. Okay, Solus warns Mithal about the other gods using the Blight. It's not just bad, it's something bad he feels responsible for. The Blight was our mistake. How is the Blight their mistake? Did they find it? Did they make it? What does that mean? Whatever it was, it convinced Mithal to take him seriously. So Mithal goes off to investigate what Solus says. Then, what? It's too clean. Seems plenty messy with them doing it. But this isn't just a memory. It's something Solus wanted to hide. What's the crime? What did we see here that he feels guilty about? I think I might know. When the Inquisitor was saving the world from the Breach, she met Mithal. What? Like in a dream? It was complicated. She helped the Inquisition. There was a magic pond and a dragon. Nice! The point is, she also said the other elven gods betrayed her, killed her. Okay, sorry. Point of order. If they killed Mithal, how was she still around to help the Inquisition? Elven god magic? She'd spent centuries gathering strength and sharing people's bodies, I think. If it was a truly benign possession, that speaks to her character. Solus tried to do the right thing by warning Mithal about the other gods using the Blight, but he got her killed. Well, it's not just that she died. What do you mean, Tosh? It's... Ugh. There was stuff he wanted to tell her, but he waited too long, and then she was dead. He never got to make it right. That twists you up. That's it. There's our crime. Doesn't really tell us anything we can use, though. We know more than we did. That's something. Then I guess we keep our eyes open if we come across more of these memories. to try to cage us, jealous of our growing power. You will pay the final price for this betrayal. We warned you not to use the Blight. For this, and for Mathol, I sentence you to sleep in exile ever after. Your own lives will form the veil that keeps the horror you unleashed at bay.
So he locked the gods away and created a veil between this world and the Fade. I mean, they were terrible, no question. But what he did, it didn't just stop them. It destroyed our culture, our world. It wasn't just to stop them. It was to stop the Blight. We've seen how bad Elganon and Gilanane are. Imagine all seven corrupted gods running wild. So he created the Veil just to keep the Elven gods locked in their prison? Yes, to keep them from accessing the Fade. But was the creation of the Veil around the world an accident? You heard him yelling. That's not the sound of a ritual going right. What do you think, Rook? Davern and I have fought the Blight for years. It's terrifying. Watching the gods poison his world, his people, I understand why Solus would do anything to stop it. I know, Rook. I I'm not denying that. I just... I wish there'd been a better way. That's all. So does he. This isn't a memory he's proud of. I had another question, and... I'm sorry, maybe this doesn't matter, but... Solus trapped the Blighted Gods in an ancient elven building, right? That's what it looks like. Maybe a palace? Fancier than what I've seen in Arlathan, at least. And then, the Magisters were lured into the Fade. They broke in, which let the Blight escape, and turned the Golden City black. Right, and the Black City hangs in the Fade, a little reminder of their mistakes. What's wrong, Lace? It's just... The Chant of Light says that the Maker built for them the Golden City, the center of all creation. But if the Golden City was an ancient elven palace, then the Maker didn't build it. The Elves did. The Chant of Light is Andraste's visions from the Maker, but it sounds like it's... wrong. You're asking if we just disprove the entire Andrastean faith. Did we? The Maker was never my faith, Lace, but I don't think you have to give it up. But what they taught us was just wrong. What if the Maker just doesn't exist? The Chance of Light might be wrong, but it's been made and changed by people over a thousand years. There was a whole verse about an elf named Shartan, and the Chantry just cut it out. So maybe the Golden City was meant as a metaphor. Or maybe it was added because of politics. That might change the history, but it doesn't have to change your whole faith. The Dalish clans are struggling with the same thing. What do we keep? What do we lose? The Elven Gods, the Maker. No matter who you light a candle to, you've got some hard questions to ask yourself right now. Doctrine is not the truth. It is one of many paths to the truth. I recognize the sentiment, though not the specific quote. Who said that? My mother. Ah. Questions of faith aside, we have some very real gods that still need killing. Looks like there are three more of these murals with the Dreadwolf's old memories. Wonder what else he's hiding. You have so long observed the world. Why not consider joining it? But I have no desire to live as humans. I have the Fade. Besides, this talk of taking on a solid form. I think you underestimate the danger. When you took the glowing stone to build your body, did the Earth not shake? Valyrium gives us the strength we had when we were of the Fade. We are the best of physical and spirit. I need your wisdom, Solus, to withstand the louder voices who would go too far like Elganon. I need you. This 
is madness. You must know that. I will always follow where you go. What? This is astounding. The ancient elves were spirits who voluntarily manifested a physical form. I'd rather go back to talking about the Blight. Hey, Lucanus, could Spite turn into an elf? No. Sorry, but... what? This is... I, I don't even know what this is, and I'm not even an elf. I can't imagine what you and Davra must be feeling. It's fine. We're spirits. What does this even mean? Could I accidentally banish myself? To be clear, this memory only shows that the first elves originated from spirits. Bellara, you and Davrin are no more spirits than anyone else conceived naturally. Conceived naturally? Guess I'll go ask my mother. The knowledge that an entire people were formed from a mass manifestation could change our entire understanding of magic. If we let it out, is that the right call? Do you want bigoted humans yelling about how elves are demons? Davrin's got a point. World's not short on small-minded humans. If the world learned about this, and it led to attacks against elves... Elves have enough trouble as it is down in Ferelden. We have to tell someone, though. Strife and Irulan, at least. If I told Thea and Viago, they'd think I was sampling Viago's poison collection. No one would believe us. Okay. We keep this to people we trust who have good reason to know. No shouting it from the rooftops. Agreed. The Morn Watch has a great deal of experience keeping dangerous secrets. So, beyond the world-shaking stuff, what else did we learn here? Solus himself was a spirit. What kind do you think he was? Well, his name is Elvin for pride. Oh, okay. There's something else. Not about spirits, or not all about them at least. Solus didn't want to become a person with a physical body. Right. He only agreed after Mathal begged him. Then that's his regret. He wishes he'd never taken physical form. Maybe, but not just that. Solus was scared. They built their bodies out of lyrium, and it made the ground shake. Lyrium is the blood of the Titans. The Titans would have felt it as an attack. They defended themselves. The first memory we saw with Elganon seizing power, it happened at the end of a war. A war between the Titans and the Elves. Lace, I'm so sorry. It feels like we still don't have the full picture. But I think that's part of what Solus regrets. He didn't see the danger. Except he did. He was worried. You said it yourself. He did it for Mithal. Everything that followed, he could have prevented, if he just told her no. Then he's got a war on his conscience. Plus, whatever we find next. Have you created what we need? With this, the proper ritual will sunder every titan from its spirit. But you must know those severed dreams will certainly be driven mad. A disembodied blight of pain and anger. It is awful what we're doing. And the only way to end this war. Solus made the weapon that killed the Titans. No, not killed. He cut away their dreams and left them broken and mindless. He passed me in the halls of Skyhold for a year. He made polite conversation and he knew. He knew what he did.
I don't know what to say, Lace. I can't even imagine. I'm so sorry. I served in the Inquisition. I know terrible things happen in war. But to do something like this... The Titans were the size of mountains. I doubt the Elves were winning their fight. He considered this the cost of saving his people. Fear and guilt make people do stupid things. To do such a thing? No wonder regret eats away at Solus. No, it's worse than that. That isn't what Solus regrets. Those severed dreams will be driven mad. A disembodied blight of pain and anger. Mierda. You can't. That's not possible. When a warden hears the calling, it's like a song in their mind. Sound familiar to you, Lace? The song of Lyrium. Of the Titans. We think of the Blight as this monstrous force with no mercy, no compassion. Evil incarnate. Instead, it's a caged animal. Mistreated and imprisoned for centuries. Until all it knows is fear. If the Blight is the Titan's dreams, can we, I don't know, heal it? Bring it back from all that anger? I'm afraid I have no idea. In theory, it would be possible to restore dreams to the Titans. You can't set it free before it's healed. You'd have blighted Titans laying waste to the entire world. The Titans are a problem for later. We have Elgernon and Gilanane to deal with now. And then I want Solus to look me in the eye and answer for what he did. Each of these memories has been a deeper regret, and almost all of them involve Mithal. Only one mural left to uncover by my count. If we find it, we'll see what's worse than this. I knew that you would find me, soon enough. You need the power of a god. The strength that I alone still carry. The blighted Evanuris will soon break free from their prison. I must make a stronger one that can contain them. While the prison is important, it is not the only goal you seek. Why should I not tear down the veil and bring back immortality to all the elven people? They deserve it. The elven people of today do not deserve to see the world they love be torn apart to salve your conscience. I must fix what I have broken. I am sorry. As am I, old friend. Solus killed Mithal? After all that? Is this another memory from a different time? No. He wore that same outfit in the Inquisition. We knew Solus woke up in this world without most of his power. Now we know how he got it back. By killing the only other god around and stealing her power. All that epic magic and godly power. In the end, it comes down to love and murder. Same as always. Every big mistake Solus made is tied to Mithal. He sacrificed his life as a spirit to join her. He sacrificed his morals when he created the dagger to stop the Titans. When the other gods struck her down, he destroyed the Elven Empire to avenge her. Then he wakes up in this world, where everything's gone but his mistakes. And there she is, alive. And after all he's done, she sides against him again. All these mistakes are his fault, and hers too. If she won't help him fix the world, of course he has to kill her. So, how does everything we know help us now? He's being honest about fighting the Blight. Whatever happens, he won't risk letting it back out into the world. Agreed. But he has a plan to escape that prison, and not one we'll like. He turned on Mithal, the one person he was actually loyal to. There's no way he won't turn on us. 
He's a spirit, or was once. He might be able to possess someone, affect minds, all the things spirits do. He created the veil. His very nature is tied to it. That will be a source of strength, but also a potential weakness. Mithal has them all messed up. Anything about her or Elgernon is going to make him angry. Sloppy. Solus thinks he knows what's best for everyone. Anything he does, he'll do while telling himself he's the hero. Uh, Solus has caused a lot of damage, but he's not like Elgernon, trying to wreck the world to rule it. He's trying to repair the damage he caused, and he knows he's made mistakes. There might be hope for him. You don't think he'll turn on us? Oh, no, he's totally going to turn on us. I mean, after that. You have witnessed the Protector's tale, Dweller. Almost to its end. Almost? How can there be more? When the mighty fall, their echoes cross the ages. An audience is warranted. Speak with your visitor. She awaits you in the crossroads. It's like all the remaining blight is being drawn well, to this spark. How did you get here? I did tell you I had my ways through Alluvians when I introduced you to the Inquisitor, did I not? The Alluvians in general, yes, but not the Dread Wolf's crossroads. I would think you have more pressing questions at the moment. Questions about Solus and Mithal? Mithal? The two gods have always been linked, have they not? First, when Mithal bade her companion spirit to abandon the Fade and take on mortal form. Then, when Solus spilled Mithal's mortal blood, that he might absorb her power as his own. Wait. How do you know exactly what we saw of Solus's past? Think upon it, Rook. You saw for yourself in the Dread Wolf's memories. When Mithal stood against the gods' manipulations of the Blight, she was betrayed and struck down. Yet she survived and returned ages later to aid the Inquisition in its hour of need. How? The Elven Gods had access to magic beyond anything we can imagine? To be sure, but it matters less what they possessed than what they were. You recall that the first Elves were spirits, do you not? Mithal was a spirit turned to Elven, and when her body was struck down to spirit, she returned, her essence sheltered in a willing mortal vessel. Over the centuries, she journeyed from host to host, slowly amassing her former power anew, until once again she was struck down, on this occasion, by Solus. He absorbed her power, but not her memories. Then where did they... Wait. You. As you say. If your Mithal returned in Morrigan, we need your help with fighting the gods. And here I am, as you may notice. But there is something I must make clear. What? It was like how Elganon and Gilanane can talk in your head, but... Twas Mithal you heard. Her echoes. Yet I am not the goddess returned. What are you, then? I once feared Mithal would consume me were I to carry her, but twas not so. I remain free-willed and mortal. What I now possess is but a spark of Mithal, shadowed memories through which to sift for meaning. 
As to our admixture, I suspect you have questions. How can you carry Mithal's soul if you're not an elf? Her spark has sheltered within both elves and humans who were sympathetic to her in thought and circumstance. Mathal's last host was a woman wronged, trapped by those sworn to love her. We may readily imagine their kinship. Do you have information we can use against Gilanane or Elganon, or Solus? The last time Mathal faced Elganon and Gilanane, she was struck down by the very dagger you now carry. What about Solus? You may recall he murdered Mathal's former host to claim her godly might as his own. I hoard no untapped magical secrets, Rook. What I do possess, I share freely with you and the Veil Jumpers. All right. So, there's the soul of an elven god inside you. How does that even happen? Mathal's last host was my mother, Flemeth. Oh. When I learned she intended me to become the next receptacle of an ancient god's soul, I feared naught would be left of my own. It inevitably came to pass on a deep night. I was awakened by the presence of a blaze of magic in the shape of a woman who both was and was not my mother. Wow. You woke up to a god floating over you. Twas a state between dream and wakefulness where strange things may happen to the spirit. Mathal's memories were both gift and burden, this blazing woman told me. But I must accept them of my own accord. The decision was paralyzing. What would it mean to become such a host? What would be lost if I refused? In the end, it was something in my mother's voice which guided me. What was that? Regret. Not the regret of a god, but of a mother who knew she would never see me again. And so, my mind remains my own. What I gained was knowledge, both Mathal's and of those who bore her. You would have met Solus in the Inquisition, right? I did indeed. T'was before I possessed Mithal's memories. At the time, I thought Solus a scowling elven apostate whose sole passion was finding arguments. He heard me, in all my ignorance, expound on the histories of the elven people, explaining legends he had witnessed himself. Bet he loved that. Tis not a memory that brings me pride. You didn't come out here just to tell me you're Mithal. I am not Mithal in her entirety. But yes, the Dreadwolf has occasion to visit you in dreams, where he portions out advice. And now, after finding his memories, you have peered into his deepest sorrows. Tell me then, what do you make of Solus? I should ask you. Mithal knew Solus better than anyone. I would influence your answer. Or do you mean to discover if I would stand directly against the Dread Wolf, were there a need? Would you? I shall aid you in any way but that, even had I the power. What has passed between Solus and Mithal? I beg you, do not ask this of me again. Solus talks a lot about what has to be done, being forced to make hard choices. But it's like he's trying to talk himself into it. I think, deep down, he doesn't entirely believe what he's saying. Tis exactly like the old wolf to tie himself into the most intricate knots. 
Tis not malice which made Solus your opponent, but conviction, a belief that only he may halt what he set in motion. Yet Solus was once beloved of Mathal. Tis his very loyalty and love for his people that led to the tragedy we now face. You may be in a position to determine how it ends, more so than either of you might realize. Maybe there's a way we all get what we want. Do you truly believe such a thing? Well, maybe at least what we deserve. If you would shape the outcome of your battle, I've one last secret to share. When Mathar was struck down by the other gods, it was with her own Lyrium dagger, the dagger you now carry. Solus recovered it from Elganon, and from it extracted a fragment of Mathal that had lain hidden within its depths. This fragment, a younger sister to the one I carry, if you will, resides here, in the crossroads. I can open the way for you, find her, survive the encounter, and the essence you obtain will aid you in times to come. Another fragment of Mithal, in addition to the one inside you. You are aware of what the word fragment means, are you not? One small piece of many, formed when something greater is broken. The first elves were spirits, as you well know, and when a spirit is broken, it may shatter into pieces, each holding part of the original. Among the ancient elves who became known as gods, Dirthamon and his brother, Falondin, are but one example. You make it sound like this piece of Mathal is going to attack me. You know Solus, and have seen Elganon, and memories of Mathal. They are creatures of emotion, as all spirits are. The fragment of Mathal that resides in me lived among mortals for thousands of years. She has grown wiser, and more patient. This younger sister has not. She is the essence of Mathal as a god. She is unlikely to listen to polite requests, and though she is but a fragment of the goddess, the battle will test you sorely. If she's just going to attack us, why tell us about her at all? We have enough enemies already. A fragment of a god's essence is a powerful thing. It may give you options against Algernon and Gelanane, or against the Dreadwolf himself, should he prove as cunning and treacherous as ever. If I were to try to talk with her, do you have any suggestions? She will demand respect, but detest flattery. She appreciates righteous anger, but will not tolerate pity. She is, for want of better phrasing, prickly. But if you are determined to try, then I wish you luck. Thank you for the information, Morrigan. I only ask that you reflect upon what I have said. The Dreadwolf is not so apart from the world as he thinks. There, you have the advantage of him. <laughs> 